I'm joined by Admiral James Stavridis, retired United States Navy, former Allied Supreme Commander of NATO, former combatant commander of Southern Command. Merry Christmas, Admiral. Good to see you. Good seeing you, Hugh. Just a few more days till, uh, till Christmas Day. I can't wait. You know, I, I've often wondered uh, about, I know what Christmas is like on an aircraft carrier by accounts of family and friends. I don't know what it's like on a submarines and submarines figure prominently in what I'm going to talk to you about. Do they surface? Do they just carry on silently, deadly below the waters? <laughs> hey, they do all the things you do on an aircraft carrier or a destroyer, except it's all smaller. It's all kind of miniaturized. And if you think back to uh, Hyman Rickover, the guiding admiral who created this program, his idea was, OK, let's take a nuclear reactor, which at the time was the size of a couple of racquetball courts, and let's shrink it down put it in a steel tube and drive it to the bottom of the ocean. It's a, a culture that's all about miniaturization. And so you have a small Christmas tree. You have uh, huh. small decorations. You have, I guess, a small ham that you carve up. But it's smaller, but very similar. And uh, God bless those submariners. I could never do it. I could never spend all that time under the sea. I had a friend who was an aide to Nasty, an admiral who you probably know, and uh, he well. went, yeah, and he went down on a scheduled one-week trip, and he stayed a day. <laughs> he said, "I'm done with that." I think he was command of a carrier group at that point. Well, anyway, the reason I bring up submarines with you, Admiral, is because the news this morning I'm reading: the U.S. Navy has publicly announced the transit of the USS Georgia, an Ohio-class submarine full of uh, of missiles, and the Ticonderoga class Port Royal and Philippine Sea to the Arabian or Persian Gulf. And Israel has announced it has transited through the Suez Canal with the permission of Egypt, of course, one of its submarines. Normally we talk about strategic things. What is the tactical significance of this deployment and the fact that I see a picture of the Georgia above ground behind this Ticonderoga class uh, ship in the Gulf? I got one word for you, Hugh, and it's not encouraging. The word is tomahawks. Um, this is all about the tomahawk missile count. Uh, when you pull a couple of Ticonderoga-class cruisers who uh, collectively have a uh, couple of hundred-plus tubes, now some of those have anti-air missiles in them, but that's a lot of tomahawks. And that Georgia, those, um, those submarines are just loaded, and they carry nothing but Tomahawks. So this is a huge number of tomahawks pulled into the Gulf. And the key is that, therefore, it's a very short flight time for them to hit targets where else but Iran. So um, I'm not operating here on any classified information or briefing from the Pentagon at this point. This is simply my intuition, but it's based on a, a lifetime of experience with the Tomahawk missile. When you pull them close to shore and you bring them in numbers, you are certainly putting yourself in position to conduct a strike. I hope we do not do that. It's not the right course of action. Let me conclude by saying that a submarine through the strait at this particular moment, their submarines don't carry those kind of long range uh, land attack missiles. So I am. Per My guess is it's about intelligence gathering, listening, those kind of things. Well, Admiral, the, um, the problem uh, is that yesterday or two days ago now, uh, the Iran-backed militias outside of Iraq rocketed the American embassy, and we had to use the CRAM, the counter-rocket artillery and mortar system that is basically the American version of Iron Dome around the Green Zone to intercept them to prevent damage. And there is the anniversary of the killing of Soleimani, the Iranian general, coming up in January. And there's, of course, lingering anger in Iran over the killing of their nuclear scientist. Uh, do you think this is a deterrence? Is this intended to say, do not even think about something? I think that's a fair assessment, and I think the best assessment. And I, that is the assessment I hope is at play in the minds of people like uh, Robert O'Brien, our mutual friend, who's the national security advisor, very steady hand. Um, there is nothing wrong with positioning forces. There's nothing wrong with setting the table, as the expression goes. 
Um, what you need to be careful of in a moment like this is a miscalculation, perhaps on the part of the Iranians who decide, hmm, there's a lot of controversy in Washington, people are distracted, the pandemic, the stimulus bill, the president and his concerns about the election, all of that, and now might be the time to take a shot at an American warship. My uh, message to Iran is be very, very careful. Yeah, I, I think that would inevitably lead to Donald Trump before he leads office. If they provoke him, he will respond. I, I, I honestly think that is a given, Admiral, and that they ought not to play this game, especially with a president who is angry uh, at domestic political concerns. Given an opportunity to hit, he'll hit. Do you agree with my assessment? 100%. And uh, we've discussed this before. The, the Really, the nightmare end of this would be the Iranians go outside the Gulf, but perhaps they go after an American ambassador. We've seen some flickers of intelligence that suggest that was a target. Again, that would be an enormous miscalculation by Iran. Um, on the other hand, and concerningly, uh, there is great domestic pressure in Iran right now on the on the mullahs, on the senior leadership, um, because the economy's cratering, because the uh, pandemic has hit them so hard, um, there's a lot of pressure for them, the leadership of Iran, to strike out and respond. I hope they're smart enough not to do that. The last thing in the world anybody needs at this point is a, a major series of attacks on Iran that's not gonna set uh, the United States up for success or certainly not Iran. Let us hope uh, cool heads prevail, find to set the table, create some deterrence. Let's uh, ascribe the movement to that. Okay, let me ask you to play out the Red Dawn sort of scenario or whatever. Red Storm was the Tom Clancy novel that always projected things that happened. If they did something that provoked the president uh, to order the sec def, to order whoever's in charge of that submarine, does the submarine go to the combatant commander? The submarine takes its orders from the combatant commander, so the chain of command would go from the president to the secretary of defense to the combatant commander, that's General Four Star Marine General Frank McKenzie, uh, who is uh, headquartered, of course, in Tampa, Florida, has a forward headquarters in Doha, in Gutter. Um, he would give the order, which would then go through Fifth Fleet, Three Star Navy Vice Admiral, thence to the submarine and the uh, cruiser commanders to set up the strike. I've launched strikes like that um, as, a, as a captain, a commodore it's called, with a group of destroyers and cruisers working for me. The chain of command I just described is the one to which I responded and it's precisely the same as the one you would see today. Is the commodore on board one of those ships or is the commodore in Doha? Uh, the commodore in this case would be uh, in Bahrain, uh, probably, or he could be in, uh, he could be embarked on one of those ships. He could be in the strike group command, which is on the aircraft carrier. So the Commodore could be in a variety of places, but again, that's how the chain of command would go. And of course, uh, in today's Navy, it's not like Nelson's day where uh, the flag officer had to be embarked on the ship and sending up signal flags. You can be anywhere and launch these strikes. So what I want to ask you to speculate on is targets. If they did something serious, something that really required a decisive response to the United States, what do you think and how many targets could the United States use? And do you expect it would be limited to the sea-based assets or would we see assets departing from our allies in Israel and the Gulf. Since you are using Tomahawk missiles, which are used for land attack, not to go after sea-based units, I would expect the target package would be in the dozens plus and, wow. would, be, and would be targeted probably against military facilities. We probably would not go against so-called counter-value targets, population centers, you wanna minimize collateral damage. And I think it would be, if we play the scenario that this was in response, for example, to the recent attacks on our troop concentrations in Iraq, my guess is we would go after 
sea-based versions of that. So think uh, naval ports, um, radars, coastal radars, um, installations that support maritime operations to include potentially some ships or submarines which concern us in port. Uh, again, let us hope we don't go there, um, but certainly the capacity with all those Tomahawk numbers is way up. Not the nuclear facilities, that, I think it's Natanz, is that what it's called? You, you don't expect that would be in the target package? I do not. I think that would, uh, would be provocative um, beyond the reasonable response level. If you're trying to tie the strike, as I think you would under international law, to a uh, response, a deterrence piece, you're probably going to go after the kind of targets I described, not after the nuclear targets. Uh, last question, Admiral. What would Israel be pushing to do? Wouldn't they want to go for the big, if, if, if Iran provoked, wouldn't they say, let's just take care of the nukes right now? Yes, I believe they would. And uh, you'll certainly see that from a Netanyahu government. I know you follow Israeli politics fairly closely. We're probably headed to a fourth election in two yep. years. It'll occur as Netanyahu finally goes into the docket for uh, the corruption charges that are against him. I think the incentives are high for Netanyahu to conduct a strike like that, which would, for obvious reasons, be very popular within Israel. Um, again, this is where the United States needs to be the adult in the room. That's why say, Jared Kushner is in Israel, I believe. They say he's over there to name a, a, a square. I think Jared is there because this is on the table because the Iranians are, we're picking up intel, Admiral. Do you have a speculation to close this segment out with? I would simply say um, he is very close to the leadership, both of the Gulf Arabs and the Israelis. I'm sure those conversations are underway. In the good news category, if you're hoping for not a strike, I have read that he is on a commercial flight uh, going from Israel to Morocco, the first commercial flight since the recognition of uh, Israel by Morocco. Let us hope his mission remains on the peaceful side of the ledger. In this season of peace, I hope you're right. I hope the Iranians listen to you, Admiral. Merry Christmas, Admiral. I hope you and your family enjoy a wonderful one, and I hope we talk next week. Indeed, I'll be talking to you next week, which still won't be the new year. But next year, let's talk about how we started 2020 and how we end 2020 in our conversations. I think that'll be of interest. We will do that. We will do that next week. Admiral James Stavridis. Follow him on Twitter, at Stavridis J. Follow me over to relieffactor.com.